Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, I've got quite a, a varied mix of things going on. I do some BSP threading in the layers, actually make a, a dive hold and prepare a well enough shaft for a friend of mine. I get a bit more work done on the vertical steam engine, uh, start putting it together, and then I have a little bit, a bit of a setback towards the end. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure something will be able to back home. I'm going to do the draw tonight for the little DTI gauge. I'll do it myself because, once again, Deb is at work and it's just me here, so I've got no choice, really. Uh, I did some video last week when we were away with the, the Super Center steam wagon. Uh, I didn't get it put up, but I'm going to put it up tonight, hopefully, in part two. Anybody who watches my channel probably saw I did a, a review on a Banggood face mill. I do a little bit more testing on that because there was quite a lot of sort of negative feedback coming through. People saying that the, the tips were different heights, it was only cutting on one tip. Anyway, I do some measuring and a little bit of a follow up, and I'm sure you'll find the results quite interesting. Carry on, get the draw done first. Quite a few new names come in this week, one from right in the bottom. Daniel Saunders. Right, Daniel, there you are. All you need to do is send me an email with your address on and I'll post that little dial gauge off anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. But with a name like Daniel Saunders, I would say it was UK. I'm going to do another giveaway this week. This week's giveaway is going to be for this bore gauge. I'll get a close-up shot of that so you can have a look at it. I'm going to carry on doing giveaways probably as long as my channel keeps on going. Um, it's just a little way of me saying thanks very much for all the support I've had. People are sending us now on a regular basis things in to give away. Um, it's pointless me having a, a box full of one particular item when I'm never going to use them all. I'd rather somebody has them. So if you do win a prize and it's no good to you, give it away. Anyway. Definitely worth sending your name in. All you have to do as usual is send me an email with your name on, your full name, like John Mills, not just John. That's my email address up there. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post the prize off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. This is the first mail I did a, a video on uh, last week, like a review. And quite a few people have commented that I didn't measure the, the height of the the tips of the tools to see how accurate the hole that was made, which is true, I didn't. So I'll do it now. I shall zero the display on that. One. Zero. One. Zero. One. Zero, one, and zero. So that all then a thousandth of an inch. We've got two at zero and two protruding by one. So what I'd like to do next is mount a, a clock gauge on here so I can use a clock gauge to get a, a more visible or a yeah, so that you can see a lot easier to see. I've got a nice big dial clock gauge here, but I haven't got anything to mount it on to, so I'm going to make a little bracket to go into here. Just so I can mount the clock gauge. Clock gauge has got a, a hole in the back, so I'll possibly just mount it through that one mounting hole. I'll see what material I've got that'll, that'll fit in there. Right, I found a piece of case steel that fits in there perfectly. So basically all I need to do is cut a suitable length off, face the end, drill it and tap it for a bolt to go through there, that will be 6mm. And I'll be able to mount that directly onto the end of there and do a little bit more checking. I think this is actually the first time I've used this substitute before George Chuck, the machine something square in. Anyway.
square the end up with a drill at the top of six mil. Six with a plug top, and I'll just run this in by hand. It looks simply slides into there and the clock gauge is fastened on with a little domed head on screw, a on bolt, like that. Now it's positive mountain. Okay, we'll have another look at this. Face mill cutter. Right. What I really need is a broader part on there that's got a rounded, a rounded tip on it, and it's going to be difficult to make sure it goes on the same place on each on each tool. It's rounded so I can zero it there. I'll try another one. Now we're not getting a, not getting going to get a constant result. So I'll have to make something with a flat end to go into there. I'll see what I can find. We we indicate a box. Right, the threads on the end of this. Gauge of three mil. That's a three mil bolt. And I've actually got a three mil die, so I should be able to make a, a little flat part to go on the end of there. I don't know because that there's three mil six is about my limit, but anyway, we'll see how we get on with it. I found a nice little sort of brass bolt that should do the job. I'll just face the end and turn the hex off it. Turn it on and put some threads on it, just like that.
Right, we need this turned down to 3mm with some threads putting on it. Looks pretty true. This is running at 1000 RPM, it will run faster, it goes up to 2000. Um, if I had the collar chuck on, I would run it a bit faster, but not with this, not with this Oriental 4 door chuck on, I'm not going to. I think it is rated for 2000 RPM, but I wouldn't like to be near it. Right, that's on 3mm now. Just going to put a chamfer on with a nice smooth flay on it. We'll try and put some threads on it. And I've got a 3mm die in the, the die holder. It's actually put the threads on there. That's up to the, up to the shoulder. These are real cheap dies, these are. Well, it has put a quite a nice thread on. <coughs> I'm just going to get a needle file and just put a nice little square corner in there. Take a, a glue of the thread down that so it screws right into the into the dial gauge and sits on the shoulder. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's screwed in quite nicely. Right, we'll give it another try and see what sort of results we'll get now. Okay, we've got zero. Zero. Possibly half a thou. Zero. So those four teeth, or those four cutters, are within half a thou of each other, one thousandth maximum and I think for budget quality tooling that's plenty accurate enough I mean for what you're paying for the cutter you can pay more for a pack of the chips than you can for the cutter, the arbor and the tips um, all I did was try and do a little bit of a review on it which meant I got a free tool and I get nothing at all obviously for people, people buying them but I still say for the money it's good value. Anyway, I have got one more little accessory made for me. Nice me to tell you clock gauge. I think I'll be using this one on the lathe from now on because I did drop the the one I normally use down the back of it and <laughs> it's gonna be a major operation to get it back. All I'm going to do is take off the, the surface kitten and surface rust. I don't want to take any metal off. The wire wheels are ideal for this. This is the piston rod, and that's what they call the crosshead. That's a, that's a gland, that's packing fuel goes in there, which seals the, 
the piston rod because there's steam on both sides of the piston. It's got a little E on which all the ears go to the front of the engine. Plenty of oil. Ear to the front. That simply slides into there like that. And the gland goes on. The gland only fits one way. Won't go that way. A lot of these things are made so they only fit one way. Some people call it unique. Right, so next we can fit the piston. The piston on this engine is a three piece piston. Piston bottom, bronze piston ring, and the piston top. They're tightened together, the piston rod goes so well, the nut on the top, tightened together, and the rings allow to float nice and free. This can go in next. Right, so that's a piston in, down past the steam port. That can be now tightened up. As I've said earlier, this only goes one way around. What we need to do now is put some packing in there. I've got some graphite impregnated yarn here which are what sort of yarn it is I know what they would have used in the in the day it would have been graphite it would have been asbestos but we don't use asbestos anymore I think that'll do it there. We'll trim off the excess. Right, that goes into there. A little bit of oil. As I've said, that only goes one way, which is that way. That goes down and compresses the, the packing and gets some more in there, which pushed down. Probably another turn. Go on. Aye. I'm okay. Right, pet. That's better. And there's two nuts go on here. They tighten up and compress the packing and that's what seals the piston rod against the steam. Once it's been run for a bit, the reason you need to tighten it up again and then more packing putting in. 
will just form a nice steel tight joint which is self lubricating as well. Starting to grip now. Don't want it too tight, just enough to bend it's grip in there. Make sure it's nice and level. Which it is. It's got a nice, a nice grip there. I'll just back it off a little bit. Just to slap it off, so when we assemble the engine, we know that nothing's bending. And it's now time to put the, the top on the bottom, so to speak. Make sure the bait and faces are nice and clean. Let's simply grip it in there. Like that. We'll put the piston right at the top, so it's out of the way. Right now I did we drill all these holes that were all pissed and I made or at least I've put fitted dowels in so this only goes together one way or at least so when it goes together it goes together the way it was drilled the dowels will keep everything in line once we find a hole One. Right, so that now everything's lined up. It can't be an else but lined up because I did drill it, clamp it, and spot it was through. And put the securing bolts in. Actually managed to find some Whitworth bolts, which are just the right length to go through there. I think it looked better with the nuts to the top like that, but with the stud shortened down. Yeah. If I take a piece off the end of each bolt, it's going to look considerably better. These have got studs sticking up. The big end's got studs sticking up, so I'm going to do it that way. I've just marked that, shorten the four bolts and then reassemble it. Right, that definitely looks better with the bolts shortened like that. And I'll just put four little put some thick grease or something just to hide those double pins and nobody'll know they're there, except anybody that's watched this video. Right, next thing is to connect the crankshaft to the, the cross head. This is one of the better machine parts on the whole engine. There is a split pin through there. Right, I've had a bit of a disaster. I decided to give the main bearings another little nip and I've actually smashed one of the cast iron cube pieces. Possibly because I did drill that hole out bigger uh, to accept the, the new oil as I made. I think what I'll do is make two more out of steel. It'll make a nice video for next week I suppose. Anyway, I've had enough, enough of it now. <laughs> yeah, good.